Hello everyone. In the previous section, we learned about the origin of the MR signal, how it arises from the interaction of radio frequency pulses with the net magnetization, and that it takes the form of a free induction decay detected in an RF coil. We discussed how the dephasing of the magnetization due to B0 filled in homogeneity causes loss of transverse magnetization and signal decay. So is it possible to reverse this dephasing in some way to recover this lost magnetization and regain the signal? It turns out that the dephasing of spin vectors can be reversed by applying a 180 degree pulse to the transverse magnetization. Initially, we create transverse magnetization with a 90 degree pulse. The spin vectors associated with different Lamour frequencies then begin to dephase. In our rotating frame of reference, the blue spins, processing faster than the Lamour frequency, rotate clockwise about Z B0, and the red slower spins process anticlockwise. If at a time tau after the 90 degree pulse, a 180 degree RF pulse aligned along the x-axis is applied to the transverse magnetization, we see that the vectors are rotated through 180 degrees around the x-axis, finishing back in the x-prime, y-prime plane on the other side of the x-prime axis. After the pulse, the vectors then continue to process around the z-axis in the same direction as they were processing prior to the pulse. This means that after another time period of tau, the vectors will reconverge, this time aligned along the minus y prime axis. This process is called refocusing and reverses the dephasing. Let's look at this again in its entirety. If we were to acquire the signal during this sequence, we would observe the transverse magnetization decay immediately following the 90 degree pulse and then increase again when the Y magnetization reforms as the vectors refocus. The signal then decays again once vectors continue to process and dephase once more. This signal is known as a spin echo. This refocusing can also be achieved by applying a 180 degree pulse aligned along the Y primed axis. Again, a 90 degree pulse is followed by a time tau for the spins to dephase, and then a 180 degree pulse along the Y primed axis is applied. This time the spin vectors are rotated 180 degrees around the Y primed axis, and then converge back along the plus Y primed axis. This would give rise to a spin echo, but with the opposite sign compared to the echo obtained with the 180 degree pulse along the X primed axis. If the magnetization is allowed to dephase for a further time tau after the echo and another 180 degree pulse applied, the vectors will again be refocused forming a second echo. This process can be repeated to form multiple spin echoes. So now we have the basis of an RF pulse sequence. The 90 tau, 180 tau series of pulses and delays is called a spin echo sequence and is the fundamental pulse sequence around which many MRI sequences are built. The top blue line represents the RF transmitter pulses and the bottom yellow line the receiver and the signal that is detected. In this case the receiver is turned on after the 180 degree pulse and we detect the spin echo which reaches maximum intensity at the end of the second tau time. The time between the 90 degree excitation pulse and the echo maximum, that is 2 times tau, is called the echo time or TE. TE is an important parameter in MRI that has a significant impact on image contrast as we will see later. So we have seen that the dephasing of magnetic moments by B0 field in homogeneity can be reversed by a 180 degree pulse. This is true provided that the B0 field does not change during the tau times. If the field changed in some way, then the precessional frequencies of the vectors before the 180 degree pulse would not be the same after the pulse, and so an echo would not form along the Y primed axis 
at time to tau. Of course, the formation of echoes cannot go on indefinitely or after long periods of precession time. At some point, the system has to return to equi equilibrium. This process is known as relaxation and occurs through other dephasing mechanisms that are not reversible. For transverse magnetization, this occurs through interactions between the individual spins and so is called spin-spin relaxation. As we know, the proton is a spinning charged particle and as such will generate a local magnetic field of its own. Another proton nearby may be affected by the local field of the first. The effective field at the second proton could be altered by that of the first proton and so its Lamour frequency will change. The extent of this shift in frequency will depend on the proximity of the first proton and the direction of its local field at the second nucleus. Since water molecules are freely tumbling and rotating, this motion causes the local field at the second proton to fluctuate. This animation shows this spin-spin interaction. As the molecule tumbles, the local field at one proton passes through the other spin. The field changes at the second spin depends on the rate of molecular tumbling. If the fluctuations occur at a rate that approaches the Lamour frequency of the second spin, then that spin may be excited and an energy level transition may occur. This process is important for T1 relaxation which we discuss in the next section. So we can say that spin-spin relaxation will take place in a time-dependent manner. The molecular motion is virtually random, and so the variations in frequency are not constant with time throughout the spin-echo sequence. Spin-spin relaxation is therefore an incoherent dephasing process, and so dephasing of this type is not reversible. Other mechanisms also contribute to spin-spin relaxation, including chemical exchange where, where a proton on one water molecule exchanges for a proton on another through hydrogen bonding effects. So we see that the spin echo sequence will only refocus magnetization dephased by a magnetic field in homogeneity. Spin-spin relaxation cannot be recovered and leads to irreversible loss of signal. The signal decays exponentially with time and the rate at which this relaxation occurs is governed by a rate constant, the relaxation time, T2. T2 is a property of the nucleus that is dependent on a number of environmental and chemical factors and is the basis of one of the most important image contrast mechanisms that allow us to distinguish one form of tissue from another.